eBay bargain, 200 UK pounds, uh, 3040 CNC. Um, reason being so cheap, it's not in the best of condition. The uh, motor didn't spin at all. Uh, a lot of the screws are corroded. It's sat in a garden shed by the look of it. Uh, a couple of faults with it, uh, but we've run through uh, what I think the faults were, well, what I found to be the faults, and um, we've got it up and running now. So I thought I'd sort of show you the settings that I used to get it up and running because there seems to be a lack, well, I don't know, just basic knowledge on the internet. Um, I just had to get it up and going. Uh, this is using Mac 3 by the way I'm going to be using. Um, the control box I'll show you now. It's the uh, TD 3 axis controller. I think it's a UCNC board. Um, one of the faults I found was the 10k pot on the front wasn't working. Um, hence the uh, motor wasn't spinning. And also the uh, 24 volt fan on the back wasn't running. No, me being a cheap skater, I haven't got a 24 volt fan. I've got a 12 volt, so I've dropped a 12 volt in, and this little board here is extra. It's just a small 5 volt, sorry, 12 volt regulator that I had, which is running off the IC 18 volt supply. It's all up and running now, all seems to work well. Uh, checked all the components, uh, it's coming for this FET to go. Uh, this fuse had blown, I'm not sure why. Um, I traced all the components through, everything was okay. The only thing I can put it down to was this, this pot had gone falter, the 10k pot. Other than that, the, everything else now seems to work. Give it a clean, it's full of dust and brick dust and stuff, same as the uh, CNC machine. Um, and I'll, I'll just show you working, um, just to show you working, but then I'll show you the settings that are used. And it took me a little bit of time to get this working, um, but it all seems to work okay. I'm controlling it using the keyboard. As you can see, all the axes are moving. This is quite smooth as well. This is my first attempt at settings on it anyway, so after I've been messing with it for quite some time, uh, I'll just turn on the spindle. Now I've got spindle control. And if I adjust the variable on the control box, I can slow it right down to next to nothing. So that all seems to be working, which I'm quite pleased about. I do have a few uses for this. One of the most important settings was the setting of the LTP port. Um, I've gone actually into the system BIOS. Now on your PC it could be press F2, press delete. Uh, you'll just have to know or Google how to get into the BIOS of your PC. Um, basically all we need to do is if we go down on board devices and we look at the mode for the LPT port it needs to be set to EPP I've tried PS2 didn't work I've tried ECP didn't work but EPP seems to be the mode that it works best at the other thing I'd check we're at this point so we set the port mode to EPP that's echo papa papa is now to check the port address. So on LTP port address, we've got 378H, which uh, you'll need to document that for Mac 3 on the initial setup screen. Now, just to give you a quick benchmark on this old Dell PC, uh, it's running an Intel Pentium. Let's have a look at the memory that's on board. Uh, it's a Dell. Well, according to this, it's an OKG317 and a total of memory DDR2 of 4 gigabytes. 
It seems to run this machine okay. I've never used it in anger yet, so to speak, to make anything, but we'll soon find out. Hopefully you've installed your Mac 3, and it should look something like this. Now if we go to config, select native units, I'm in the UK, so I'll work in millimetres, so I'll say OK for that. And then if we go to ports and pins. Now if you remember from the selection on the BIOS, uh, we wrote down uh, the LTP port address, uh, which was 378, which, so we've got that enabled, as this is uh, a 3040T uh, LTP operated, not USB. So, and the kernel speed of 25,000 hertz. So nothing else should be ticked in this box. This is purely my settings which got me up and running. Motor outputs. Now we need the X, Y and Z axes enabled. Now if you've got a fourth axis then you're going to have to sort that out yourself. But the step pin and step direction for the X axis is 2 and 3. The Y axis is 4 and 5. The Z axis is 6 and 7. Now the Y axis and the Z axis, uh, when I was using the keyboard to control or the jog and shuttle, uh, was operating in the wrong direction. So the direct active low I've had to tick for the Y axis and the Z axis. The other setting is step active low uh, for all three axes, X, Y and Z. The step port needs to be set to 1 and the port direction for 1. Input signals. Now the input signals I've turned everything off. I don't have homing switches at the moment. Um, I don't have anything else other than an e-stop which I've disabled the e-stop because I don't want it to interfere with this just basic setup so everything in this section is switched off output signals from what I've seen on the net and what I could uh, ascertain as what works with my machine is I an enable one I've enabled and the port and the pin number are both one and it's active low the output one is enabled, port is pin one, pin number 14, active low. There's no other settings in there, it's just those two settings. The encoder, I haven't got one, so nothing to do in there at all. Spindle setup. Now, I don't control the uh, spindle via the Mac 3 software, so I could disable that. Uh, there's nothing in here I actually use. The motor is driven by the, um, the TD box, but it's, uh, I believe it's a DC motor um, with just a variable resistor on it. The mill options, um, I haven't changed anything in this at all. It's as per default. Say OK to that. OK, now if we look at motor tuning. Now motor tuning for the X, Y and Z I've defaulted to velocity of roughly 800 and the acceleration 300 the step pulse is 5 and the direction pulse is 5 for all three axes. Now the only thing that changes is the steps per and this value comes from doing the calibration of how far the motor is travelling when you actually tally it and to get to that that screen um, so if I just go through all three of these you can see the values I've got there the Y axis and the Z axis and this value is derived from so if we get that if we go into settings and down here we've got set steps per unit so if we click on that Choose which axis we want to calibrate. So say we want to calibrate the x-axis and we've got a digital vernier or um, a rotary gauge or even just a tape measure. Basically, how far would you like the x-axis to move? Now I'm working in millimetres, so if I type 50 in there, then effectively, when I click OK, the x-axis should move 50 millimetres. So we click OK and we wait a few seconds for it to get to where it's got to go 
how far did the x-axis move now this is where you take your measurement from your digital vernier um, your rotary gauge or your tape measure whatever you've used and I'm going to type in there 50 millimeters I'm going to say it was right click OK so now this is where that setting comes from the x-axis will be set to 552.811286 steps per unit would you like to accept this now I'm, I'm going to say no at the moment because I've already done it um, what I suggest you do is that you do it a few times I actually found through trial and error due to backlash um, and also I got the on the um, motor tuning I got the velocity set too high so it was causing me issues it was sort of jerking as it run off this is why I set it down to about 800 uh, previously I had it at 1200 um, and the same with the z-axis I wasn't getting consistent readings because it was sort of jerking uh, so I set the velocity lower and it seemed to sort the problem out um, I hope that helps uh, there's only one last thing to look at is the general config now I haven't changed anything in this really um, these settings work with my machine I did change this jog increment in jog cycle mode 110 110 and uh, it was just something I seen on the net the um, distance mode is absolute uh, incremental for IJ mode motion mode constant velocity now if you have got um, homing switches and you want them to sort of like where it sort of floats up to it touches it comes back goes forward that's done here on the debounce interval and index debounce um, if you google it you'll find quite a bit of information about that um, that's really all the settings I've changed really and it seems to be up and running now there's nothing else that I've changed